Weeks of Advent are rolling by, and for many, the things of Christmas are already upon us. Though in much diminished form this year, as we prepare for celebrations each in our own home, rather than joining large festive gatherings. The story that the candles on the Advent wreaths in Birch's Tale is also heightening in intensity as Christmas draws near. But it invites us to wait and ponder the meaning of this season just a while longer. The first two candles have told of God's horizon opening promises of hope and of a future. And then of how these promises take ever greater shape over the generations through the words of the prophets. This week, we light the third candle and pray the third prayer, which speaks of the mysterious figure of John the Baptist, a wild looking character who appears on the scene close to the first public appearances of Jesus. Blessed are you, sovereign Lord, just and true. To you be praise and glory forever. Your prophet, John the Baptist, was witness to the truth as a burning and shining light. May we, your servants, rejoice in his light and so be led to witness to him who is the Lord of our coming kingdom, Jesus, our Saviour and King of the ages. Blessed be God forever. John is a fascinating character. When we first encounter him, you might be forgiven for thinking he's something of a first century Bear Grylls. He lives in wild, inhospitable places, dresses in rough clothes made of camel hair, and survives on locusts and wild honey. He was the son of Zachariah and Elizabeth, given by God as a special child with a special task, to draw back all those who'd got lost somewhere along the way into a new relationship with God, to prepare the way for God's promised Messiah to come among them, for God's promised kingdom of justice to come among them. In helping us to understand John, the gospel writers draw on the words of the prophets whom we remembered last week. Words such as those from Isaiah, who foresaw a voice crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. This preparation included calling people to recognize and confess their sin, their falling short, of the life God had called them to. And as a sign of this, to be baptized, to be washed in the River Jordan, signifying their desire to make a new beginning. Moved by his words, weary of the uh, oppression and poverty of the world they lived in, longing for a better world, and longing to know God's blessing. The people do come. They come in large crowds. John is the announcer of the fulfillment of God's promises made to our ancient mothers and fathers in the faith, made through the prophets. His is the breaking news story, and it's good news. It's news that God and the renewal and blessing promised is so very very close. We can sense the expectation rising as people flock to him and then finally into this expectation will step Jesus. But that's a story for another day. At this point, John himself represents a figure of the most tremendous hope. 
If you've ever experienced a, a barren looking desert and then what can happen after a short burst of rain, you may have witnessed a seeming miracle, a suddenly a riot of small flowers and color appear as if from nowhere. Or perhaps you recall many a dreary February in our own country, and then suddenly as spring approaches, often in a matter of days, colorful spring flowers appear in the drab earth. At this point in the Advent story, we are pointed to that pending miracle in the words of the prophet Isaiah again, which brim over with barely contained joy in this song of the wilderness. A song of the wilderness. The wilderness and the dry land shall rejoice. The desert shall blossom and burst into song. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weary hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to the anxious, be strong, fear not. Your God is coming with judgment, coming with judgment to save you. Then shall the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame leap like a heart and the tongue of the dumb sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The ransomed of the Lord shall return with singing, with everlasting joy upon their heads. Joy and gladness shall be theirs and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. It is with the anticipation of this uncontainable joy which this point of Advent is filled with. Anticipation of the renewal of our lives and our world and the banishing of all that is destructive of life that causes tears and heartache. This year, more than any other year, let's hold on to those words to be strong and fear not. John, by his own admission, was not the light that was coming into the world, but he points us closer than all that has gone before. Whoever you are, whatever your situation, whether you're looking forward to Christmas or dreading being on your own this year, God invites you through the breaking news brought by John to prepare yourself to receive the light of the world that you may know for yourself this Christmas. You're invited to draw close to God as God draws close to you, to seek a new beginning, a new blessing, the fullness of life that God calls us to, to prepare to receive the one in whom all hope and healing is found, and to prepare yourself to be part of that hope-filled breaking news for the world.